Java has always fascinated me. Not only is it the most delicious sounding programming language I've ever heard, but some of my favorite childhood games like RuneScape and Minecraft were made using it. It was created to let programmers write once and run everywhere, meaning Java code automatically works on other operating systems without having to recompile, which is truly a beautiful thing. And ever since its release in 1995, it has remained one of the most popular programming languages. Needless to say, I've been anxious for a long time to try it out and see what I can do with it. Now, I must confess, when I was 12, before I even made video games, I went to my local library and picked up this book called Programming Video Games for the Evil Genius, a pretty cheesy name for a book that was just about learning Java. Of course, after skim reading a chapter or two and trying to copy the code, I quickly became frustrated and completely gave up. So fast forwarding almost 15 years later, I think it's time for me to redeem myself and see if I can actually make a game from scratch using Java. Not scratch, I mean Java. You get, you get what I'm saying. So starting off on my Java quest, I did something that I haven't done in a while, and that was actually taking a little Java course on my phone. And by take a course, I mean I just kind of did a couple levels to get a feel for what the syntax was like. And honestly, if you're a beginner or new to programming languages, uh, I feel like this is just like a good thing to do. It just kind of gives you a general idea before you just start jumping into it. Anywho, after I was done getting familiar with the basics, I downloaded Eclipse, which is an IDE. And just in case you don't know what that is, it's basically just software that you use to code in, but this one's specifically for Java. And I seem to remember I remember using an IDE called NetBeans as a kid, but Eclipse seems a lot more popular now, so I just figured I would go with the crowd. After that, I set off to create a simple Hello World program, which was pretty straightforward. Basically, you just create a package, and I named it Main, and then you create a class, and I also called it Main. I know it's confusing, just trust me on it. After that, I slapped in the classic system out print line Hello World, and there you go, your first Java program. I did it. So after getting my feet wet, I knew I was ready to start working on my real project. Instead of creating a little mini game like I normally do for these kinds of videos, I want to do something I've been dreaming about for a while now. And that's making an RPG. And I'm not talking about rocket launchers here, I mean like an old grindy RPG that you'd play on the NES. Games like Dragon Quest and Earthbound Beginnings. I don't know why, but I find these games simplistic art style, super strange characters, and repetitive combat to be so charming. They always feel so empty, yet so full of character at the same time. So now we know what direction the game's gonna take, it's time for us to do something basic, and that's just draw a window. And no, I'm not talking about getting out a box of crayons and drawing a house with a window. I'm talking about that frame that you see on your desktop when you play a game. Luckily for us, Java has its own built-in container class called JFrame, meaning our game can be built purely with vanilla Java. So I set up JFrame and made some of the parameters. Anywho, after doing all that, I was able to successfully draw a window, and as you can tell, I was very excited. Next, I created two new classes, Entity and Player. I'm planning on making NPCs later on, so creating an Entity class allows me just to reuse that code for the player and NPC. For example, like drawing their sprites or checking for collisions. And speaking of sprites, I was able to load and draw the stick guy's image, make a move around the screen, so yay. I should also point out that I found this wonderful tutorial series by Rice Snow, and it was beyond helpful. He does a really good job explaining how all this works, so if you want to know more about the nitty gritty details and all the code, definitely check it out. Next, I want to dive into creating a tile map system. This is something that has always been intimidating for me for some reason, but turns out to be super easy. Essentially, all you have to do is create a text file full of numbers. The numbers represent different types of tiles, like zero is water, and like one is grass, and two is sand. Then all you need to do is load the data into an array and then slap it into a for loop. Boom, you got yourself a tile map. Now that's great and all, but how do you make a camera system so that the player like can move around a larger tile map to area? Well, the trick is instead of moving the player, you move the tile set. After that, I made an if statement to see what tiles were on screen. That way I could save performance by only rendering what the player could see. And lastly, I created collisions so you couldn't just like walk on the water. So there you go. Now, as you can tell, the artwork is looking a little rough around the edges. And since 50% of RPGs is just artwork, I felt like we probably should update this. Now, my original idea was to create a vector art style inspired by Byron B's Pokemon world map illustrations. I've been a big fan of his work for a while and thought an RPG could look super fresh in this style. Though I quickly realized that higher resolution vector artwork wasn't going to scale well down into pixels. So this led me to kind of just create the same style but using pixel art instead. I thought the results of this were kind of cool, 
but I personally felt like this missed that quirky charm that I wanted to emulate in my favorite NES RPGs. So after a slightly iterative process and the use of the NES color palette, I ended up with this, my animal inspired RPG. So with that done, I got to work replacing and adding in all the new tiles and artwork. I also found that Pixel Edit, the pixel art software I use, has a feature that lets you export tiles out as a text file, essentially turning my art software into my level editor, which was pretty sweet. After this, I felt like the sound aspect of the game needed to be addressed. So I jumped into Lab Turf, I generated a couple of different sounds and then added them to the game. I especially love this door sound when you enter a house. It just, it's oddly satisfying. For music, I made it myself using Beatbox, which I haven't used before. I was surprised how easy it was to pick up, but uh, my song is a little clunky, so let me know what you think. After that, I created a pausing state system so you can eventually look at your inventory and view your stats. And I also drew this text onto the screen, so that text is actually a font. I also know that world maps are a pretty big deal in these types of RPGs, so I jumped back into Pixel Edit and made this kind of smaller world map just as a test run to see how I liked it. This also means I had to create a room transition system so you could go from towns to the overworld. Right now there's only one town, but I think it's it's pretty cool. It's starting, it's starting to feel like an RPG. At this point, I knew it was probably time to add NPCs. I mean, they're such a critical part. Using that entity system I mentioned earlier was super easy and made adding these NPCs take no time at all. And then I added a dialogue system so I could have bears say weird things like this. And with that, we have a basic RPG structure. We're still missing combat, which is the most crucial part of the game, but I want to save that for a future video because this was a project I just really enjoyed working on. I can't explain it, but making a game without a game engine is super satisfying. It's difficult and frustrating, especially when you know you could do it 10 times faster using something else, but it's also really rewarding because you know that you made it yourself. I have a lot of plans of what I could do with this RPG in the future, even just as a passion project. Please let me know if you'd like to see more of it. If not, I'll probably just continue to work on it on my own time. Overall, I really enjoy Java. I think this has probably been my favorite language I've used so far in this series. I highly, highly recommend you check out Rice Nose tutorial series on Java. It's unbelievably helpful. It explains everything that I covered in this video pretty much. And even if you're just mildly interested, check it out. Also, if you're wanting to learn how to code yourself and you don't know how to get started, check out a word from today's sponsor, Brilliant. Okay, you might know this by now, but Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and of course, AI. Now, one thing I really like about it is Brilliant helps build your critical thinking skills through problem solving, not memorization. So while you're building real knowledge on specific topics, you're also becoming a better thinker. Brilliant is a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that can let you play with concepts, a method proven to be six times more effective than just one watching boring lecture videos. Plus, all the content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, and learning a little every day is one of the most important things you can do for both your personal and professional growth. Brilliant helps you build real knowledge in minutes a day with fun lessons you can do whenever you have time. It's basically the opposite of mindlessly scrolling, which is a beautiful thing. Now, if you wanna start programming, Brilliant has a growing number of programming courses that are a great way to start building foundation programming skills and learn real world applications. Get familiar with Python and start building programs on day one with a drag and drop editor. Learn essential coding elements, things that everyone should know like loops and variables. And most importantly, develop your mind to actually think like a programmer. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash or click the link in the description. You'll also get a 20% off annual premium subscription. So check it out. Also, I just want to give my website a shout out, googus.fun. Check it out. It's got some information on there, the latest videos, and a picture of me. Wow. Let me know if there's any other coding challenges you want me to tackle in the future, and I'll see you next time.